This is the most exciting Chromecast in a long time. The idea of beaming up something from your phone is cool, but felt a little behind the times versus Roku and Fire TV, etc. But not only is this new Chromecast 4K and just $50, but it now has a new trick up its sleeve, a remote and it is great. Chromecast has been behind the competition for a while now, but now in one fell swoop, not only are they in the ball game with Fire TV, Roku, and the like, in some ways I actually like it better. Hi there, I am Titus, and today we are reviewing the new Chromecast with Google TV. And we'll be comparing it to the Fire TV and Roku and determining which of these is the best on the market. Also, is this an Nvidia Shield replacement at just a third of the cost? Let's get to it. In the box, it includes a power adapter with power brick, the Chromecast, and a remote, which is the most exciting part of this new Chromecast. If you ever use an NVIDIA Shield, you might be familiar with Google TV. Well, they've totally rehauled it now, and it makes finding content among all of the streaming services much easier. I don't know if I like it better than what was on the NVIDIA Shield. It reminds me of the Fire TV with sections at the top and grids of content underneath, but I will definitely note it looks much nicer than the Fire TV, and it is kind of nice that it brings the shows and movies right to you. It is a really nice interface and there's even a way to create a streaming service agnostic watch list. So on this watch list I can put on shows or movies from Hulu, Netflix, Disney Plus, whatever I want into one list of content that I want to watch later. I have to admit that is a pretty useful and neat feature. Let's talk more about that remote. It's got a pretty unique look and it's about the same size as a Roku or a Fire TV remote. On the front you have directional buttons as well as the button in the middle for selecting. Now I know when I saw images of this remote. I was really curious about the volume buttons because I didn't see them on the front and they're not on the front. They're actually on the side here. It looks like they borrowed that idea from Roku and I got to be honest here, I actually really like it this way because it makes those buttons really easy to locate without actually looking at the remote. And finally at the bottom you have the power button as well as an input button. Now this isn't really unique to Chromecast but the volume buttons can be used to control your sound system volume instead of your TV speaker volume. But I don't want you guys to miss this. Google adding an input button is a stroke of genius. That's literally the only button that's missing from the streaming box remotes that removes the need to have another remote. Having a button that can switch from my Chromecast to let's say my Xbox on this remote makes it where I don't need my TV remote anymore because all I needed from my TV remote is to turn on the TV, change the volume and change the input this thing can do all three. I will know that Fire TVs have a way to switch input as well, but it's not on the remote, it's actually a voice command, and I've had kind of mixed results using that feature. On the inside of the Chromecast, you have a quad-core processor as well as eight gigs of storage. Now, eight gigs of storage might sound like a small amount, but that's actually pretty standard on these streaming sticks, like Fire TVs, and I think Roku's as well have a similar amount of storage. Now, in terms of raw gaming performance, I ran the Slingshot benchmark, and it got a score in the high 500s. But to put that score into perspective, I also ran it on my Nvidia Shield and it got a score in the low 4000s, which totally blows the Chromecast out of the water. So I wouldn't expect this to play high-end, high graphics games, like don't expect it to play Crisis, but simple games like Crossy Road work fine. But what you can do is stream games to it and play games on it that way. I've been testing a service over the last few weeks called Shadow, which is basically a gaming PC in the cloud, and it can run that pretty well. Now, don't get me wrong, it still works when I have it in another room, but it definitely looks worse and it's not quite as responsive the further that I got away from my router. I also tried Shadow on my Nvidia Shield and I don't know what it is, but I guess that extra horsepower helps somehow here because it looked better on the Nvidia Shield than it did on the Chromecast. I didn't see as much artifacting and things were just overall a little bit smoother. And that's not to say that the Chromecast experience with Shadow was bad because it definitely wasn't. But if you want the very best game, even streaming experience, you might wanna go for the more expensive option. One weird omission at this time is that the new Chromecast cannot play Stadia at least not at its launch. I read online that it should get support sometime in the first half of next year. So if Stadia still exists next year, you might actually be able to play it on this Chromecast. This device is definitely not perfect and there are some issues that I'm hoping they will fix with software patches. With the power button, you can turn on your TV or your audio receiver. Did you hear that right? You can turn on your TV or your audio receiver not both. Now to me, this is a pretty glaring omission considering that the Fire TV 
and Nvidia Shield can do this with their remotes. Now, I really hope they fix this, but you're not totally out of the water here if you do need this feature. If you use HDMI Keck, you can basically have the Chromecast turn on your TV, and then your TV can then turn on your audio receiver once you hit that power button. The problem is I can't do that with my current system because I don't have that feature with my audio receiver right now. Another odd issue I'm having is that with some apps, I'm having a hard time controlling them with the remote. For instance, with Crossy Road, it asked me for my birthday and I could not use the directional keys on the remote to actually select my age. To get around this, and this is a pretty hacky solution I found, I literally had to hook up a mouse via Bluetooth so I could then go and click the numbers. Now with most apps I tried, it works absolutely fine. The only two apps I've had issues with is Crossy Road. And in some cases, there are some features I cannot access with Shadow. So again, I just hook up a Bluetooth mouse. So if I need to click something, I have that option. Now this is the big one. The Nvidia Shield starts out at 150 bucks. So the Chromecast is literally a third of the price. So is it a worthy alternative? For a lot of people, I would say Yes. Now don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that this is better than an Nvidia Shield, but it gives a close enough experience in a lot of ways that I think a lot of people will have a pretty identical experience. The Nvidia Shield is more powerful, but 90% of the time, I just didn't really notice that speed difference. The only exception was when I was playing a game or even when I was streaming a game via Shadow. And I will also note that Nvidia supports a lot of codecs and has some features that the Chromecast simply doesn't have. One of them, for instance, which is a really cool feature is it will actually upscale 480p content to up to 4k it does some kind of cool ai thing and if you need features like that then you have to go with the nvidia shield now the second big question is is this my favorite streaming device right now and as you can see this is the new fire stick and fire stick light that i'll be reviewing very soon please subscribe and enable notifications if you want to see that review i gotta be honest not being able to turn on my audio receiver and my tv by clicking the power button is really annoying Google, please fix this. But all in all, it's a really tough decision. I have a lot of experience with Fire TVs and Rokus and now this device, and it, I think it really all comes down to the apps that you want to use. For instance, the Chromecast does not have Apple TV, but it does have basically everything else, including HBO Max. And because it essentially runs Android, you get access to a ton of apps that other platforms don't have access to, one of which is really cool, a VPN. In fact, the VPN that I use, which I've had a really good experience with, it works great on this Chromecast. I was able to access Netflix content outside of the US on my TV with this device. That VPN is called IP Vanish, and I have an affiliate link below if you want to check it out and support the channel. One thing really neat about IP Vanish is it includes cloud storage with your subscription. So that's a nice bonus that I don't think there's any other VPN service out there that just kind of throw that in. Just go to the link below in the description if you want to check that out. Okay, more about this Chromecast. Uh, oh yeah, did I mention that it is a Chromecast? There are a ton of apps that you can beam straight to it from your phone. Now comparing this to Fire TV, I will say that Fire TV does have Apple TV Plus, but it doesn't have HBO Max, but it is an Android device at heart, so you can sideload apps from the App Store onto the Fire TV and sometimes they'll work. Maybe an app like the Shadow Gaming Service I was talking about earlier. By the way, they're not a sponsor. I know I've been talking about them a lot, but I just think it's a really cool service and I've been enjoying it. But then if you look at Roku, Roku has a ton of apps, including Apple TV, but it doesn't have HBO Max either. But Roku does have some free content you can only watch on Roku devices. Can you just see how this decision is getting murkier and murkier the more we talk about this? Maybe I should do a video on this sometime. Let me know if a video comparing Roku's and Fire TV's and maybe even Apple TV's would be helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below and I'll look into making that video if a lot of you are interested. Now for me, I'm kind of in between the Nvidia Shield and the Chromecast Google TV as being my favorite, mainly because I don't watch Apple TV Plus at this time, so I don't really need that app. If you're trying to figure out which ones to buy, what I would do is list all the streaming apps that you want on a device and see which of these check the most boxes and accommodate you best. 
because they all those systems work pretty well. Conclusion time. Yes, I absolutely recommend the Chromecast with Google TV, assuming none of the issues that I mentioned earlier are deal breakers. The interface is great, the price is right, and it supports a ton of apps. What's not to like? If you want the best streaming box out there and price is no object, then definitely check out the Nvidia Shield because this thing is pretty fantastic. But at 50 bucks, you really can't go wrong with this guy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. A couple of videos I have coming up, I am going to be reviewing those Fire TV sticks and I will be definitely comparing them to this guy as well. Um, and also I'm going to be reviewing just a bunch of the new tech products that came out uh, recently, including the Echo devices. And I might even check out the Google or Nest, Nest device, the big one that just came out. Um, anyway, if you're interested in that, please subscribe below. Thanks again. I'm Titus, by the way, and I guess I'll see you next time.